Hi guys, it's your science teacher here, back with another video. This time it's all about a specific branch of chemistry called materials chemistry, and this topic is called polymers. This is only for GCSE triple science students, um, so if you're not doing triple science, you don't need to cover this stuff. But if you are doing triple science, enjoy the video. First things first, let's look at what a polymer is. A polymer is a long repeating chain um, and it's made up of uh, monomers. And what I mean by a monomer is a single unit of that chain. And it's easy if I represent a monomer with a circle and I turn it into a chain, you can kind of see what happens during polymerization those monomers just join together and then they create a repeating unit. We use brackets to show that's where the chain stops and then repeats itself and we use a number down here to show how many repeating units we have. We can use polymerization uh, to join monomers up and to do that we use double bonds in unsaturated hydrocarbon. This is the smallest unsaturated hydrocarbon you know. It is ethene. And due to polymerization, you can join uh, them together to make a huge chain. And this actually makes polyethane. Uh, polyethene, I'm sorry. And um, basically, it just opens up that double bond chain. And it means that a lot uh, of ethene molecules can join together during this polymerization. This method of polymerization is known as addition polymerization as you start off with uh, lots of uh, ethene molecules and you just end up with one polymer long chain. There is another type of polymerization other than addition polymerization that can make different polymers known as polyesters and this type of polymerization is called condensation polymerization and why it's called condensation polymerization is because water is made as a side product of the reaction what happens is you have an alcohol uh, and you have also a carboxylic acid. And you'll notice it has the functional groups on both sides. And the reason is because you're going to join these two together. So this is ethene, uh, ethene diol, and this is dipropanoic acid. So where they're going to join is this is going to condense. So you're going to get H2O formed and this oxygen is going to bind to this carbon. So what it's going to look like is you're going to have a chain that looks like this. See? And this is going to start from here. H, H, C, H, H. Then you have the oxygen here which is going to bond them together. And that is next to the C double bond O. And then we've got, we're now onto this carbon here, which is H, H like so. Now we're onto this carbon here, the one at the end. And we have uh, it like this. And then the chain is going to repeat itself. Okay, so we put an N to show that the chain will repeat itself because this could join onto this side. It is just a repeating chain and that's what it looks like. So as I said, you make a polyester from these reactions and you might have remembered, you might have done this in the lab to make a nylon. You might have done that in class. That's a fun little practical you can do to make your own polymers. All the polymers we've looked at so far have been synthetic polymers, meaning they do not occur naturally in nature. Actually, most of these polymers are made from a substance called crude oil, which we dig up from the ground. Uh, then we separate into its different components and then through addition polymerization or condensation polymerization, we turn it into the plastics that we use. And we do use plastics all the time, from in our clothes, to in bottles, to in uh, vehicles, just basically everything we use now, we use polymers, okay? Uh, and they replace the natural products that we used to use for that. 
for example, uh, here you could have a cotton uh, jumper, but now uh, cotton is often not sourced naturally. What we do is we synthesize cotton, uh, polyesters that we use uh, to make clothes that are very similar to cotton, okay? However, we don't have to take up the land that we would need to use up in order to plant lots of cotton plants. And plastics have many desirable properties. They're often strong. You can mould them. They are resistant, meaning they don't corrode. Um, and they're often quite cheap to make and source. However, you might have seen that there is a problem with plastic right now. And that is the fact that plastic is not biodegradable, meaning that it takes ages uh, to get rid of it once it is in nature, okay? And if you've watched any of David Attenborough before, you might have seen uh, that he has lots of documentaries showing the negative effects of plastics. And the fact that it's so strong in its resistance, meaning it doesn't break down naturally, and it's building up in huge reserves and it's affecting wildlife by getting into the ecosystem, animals eating it and eventually suffocating or dying. In fact, clothes contain a substance called microplastics and when that gets into uh, the ocean, that can be incredibly bad as it can affect smaller uh, animals in the ecosystem and then obviously they get eaten by larger um, fish or uh, mammals that live in the sea and it keeps building up and building up until it's really heavily concentrated and it can cause uh, death and health issues in the ecosystem. Polymers occur naturally as well, okay, and we actually have lots of polymers in our body. Uh, one polymer we make is uh, starch. And starch is a store of glucose. Glucose uh, for every one starch uh, polymer, there is about 1,500 glucose monomers. So we turn glucose into starch. Um, and the reason why we do this is because of the fact starch is easier to store. And starch can actually be uh, turned into cellulose if we want to uh, long store it as well. And cellulose is around 10,000 glucose monomers make up uh, cellulose and in plants if you remember plant cell walls are made of that structure cellulose and up here I have a diagram of uh, glucose that has uh, become a polymer and become starch um, and it's not just uh, with glucose that this can occur it also happens uh, when our amino acids become proteins uh, we also make polymer proteins and this is a condensation reaction actually this the, up here these um, are also condensation reactions but this is a condensation reaction and from drawing out the structure of an amino acid it's easy to see how they can join up to make these polymer proteins for example here I've drawn out an amino and I can draw the uh, polymer that this amino acid would make quite simply. Uh, I'll start off with the nitrogen. Now it would lose one of the hydrogens when water is being made. And I have next to it the carbon. Then I have my C double bond O. And that is the polymer that would be made during that condensation polymerization. Perhaps the most important naturally occurring polymer is D. DNA, the backbone for human life, the backbone for all life on this planet. I've now added an image to show you how DNA is a polymer chain. Actually, it's made up of two polymer chains that are side by side. There are four nucleotide monomers that make up DNA, and they are adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine. The whole structure of DNA works on the principle of condensation polymerization to join up uh, the repeating units 
And if you look at bases, you'll notice that the base pairs match up. G is always next to C and A is always next to T. And the reason for this is because of the fact that uh, there is strong intermolecular forces between the two base pairs that complement one another. Now you don't have to remember the whole structure of DNA and how it polymerizes. All you need to know is that it is a polymer and the reason why I showed you um, the complex model of it is because of the fact I think it helps understand the structure of DNA and the fact that it is actually a polymer. Now this is the end of the video now. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember if you did like the video to drop it a like and subscribe to my channel.